Well, this APM box camera that I uh, was given as a box brownie, which of course it isn't. I thought I might well try cleaning this thing up. It's um, pretty much impossible to see through the viewfinder. The lens doubtless is not much particularly good. The shutter does function, but on the B setting, which is set with this lever at the side here, when you can pull the thing out, it certainly opens, but it's reluctant to close. So the shutter doesn't open and close properly, and it's sort of jammed there at the moment. It'll probably come right. Yeah, it's right again now. So the shutter's re reluctant to move. So I thought you might as well see what the insides of one of these things looks like. And it looks to me like the front will come off here and expose that shutter mechanism with just two screws. So let's have a go. Very long screw. Um, a wood screw, of course, not a uh, machine screw. The ends have been clipped off, so they're obviously a little bit long for the job, but it's what they had. Let's take this front panel off and have a look in here. Well, there's evidence of uh, spiders of the past there, I would say. And here is our shutter mechanism. And how does this work? Well, the lever here swings up. It applies some spring tension to the disc here. And that flicks over. As it comes back, it applies spring tension back to this. And that flicks back. When the B setting is set, Pull that lever out. Oh, it's not out anymore. Hang on. That's better. Hold that out. Yeah, it holds the shutter open, and then when you flip the lever back, it should come back. But it's reluctant. It's just too sticky. So this disc here is just sticky and it's very likely that there is too much friction where the spring runs through it in order for it to move freely as well. Just looking to see what I can do here. Now this piece, this slider, is held in with a tab here. It looks like originally it would have had a screw there as well. That screw is obviously, whatever was there is obviously missing. I'll see if I can find a screw to replace that. This tab here looks like it will rotate 90 degrees and I should be able to lift that arm off. Let's see if I'm right. Yes. So that'll pull back out of the way. Can I swing it out that way? I can. That's our B lever off. The shutter release, I think that'll lift out. Our plate here is held on with two screws that I can see. and see if this whole shutter will lift out of here now. No, it seems reluctant. It must be held by something else. I'll have to investigate. There's one more screw here, so I need to get that out. It's pretty much tucked under that plate. 
I can see by the damage to the wood that it's been off before or it was damaged when they assembled it most likely it's been off before see if I can back that screw out Now will that shutter lift off? I'll take that slide out in case that's holding us. Now it's on the move. That's it. That's our shutter mechanism here, which we'll put that to one side. Yes, it's pretty sluggish. I'd say a good dust off to start off with would be the answer. That seems to be a little bit better. The spring's probably a little bit anemic. That's probably lost a bit of its go over the years, so that might need a little bit of tensioning. I don't know if this will come off here. There's, that doesn't look like a screw. I think that's a rivet. I think that's rivet. It's posters um, riveted into there. Obviously there's a patch where it scrapes right here. So I'm looking at the state of this disc and seeing if it's a bit distorted. It's likely it is. Right, I think a bit of graphite powder under here to lubricate this disc because it's got wide broad surfaces rubbing on each other. Uh, a touch of molybdenum paste on the spring because it's um, anything but uh, smooth looking. And possibly some more tension on the spring and we'll see how that goes. I'm putting the B lever back on here. And of course, as I've noticed, there was a screw missing from here. So I'm seeing if I can find something in my pile of uh, spare parts and odd screws. It'll do that job for us. Something with a larger head would be good. What about that one? Let's see if the thread on that is about appropriate. That went in, but what happened? The bush at the back there, that was a rivet by the looks of it, and it had sheared off. So basically that was riveted on there. There was a rivet that did that job. And the rivet is gone. So something along that I can rivet in place might be the answer. A 
and something with a fairly broad head so that it'll guide that uh, thing appropriately. Right. Something like that might do the job. Let's see if I've got a shoulder screw that's about the right proportions and then I'll rivet the thing into place. Um, unless it's either that or cut the thread. Well as you can see I've been busy. I've just cut a small recess into the woodwork here to take a little brass nut. And I need the little brass nut because the little brass nut needs to go behind this plate so that I can fit the screw there, the shoulder screw, which will guide the B lever. This being the B lever here. So that's the secret there, is that needed an extra guide there. And whatever had been there originally, which was probably exactly the same as this T-shaped construction here, that had come adrift. That was long gone. Even this is not particularly tight, and I'm going to give that a little bit of a thump to uh, hopefully clench that rivet up a little bit more so that it stays where it's put. But otherwise, I should be able to put this back into the camera body now and get the shutter to work fairly reliably. The B setting certainly works. Now I notice here it's got a letter scratched in it. It's either an M or a W. Possibly the, uh, the initial who, of whoever had assembled this thing in the first place. While I've got it at this stage, it's a good time to clean out all this dust and other rubbish that's in here. There's all spiders' nests, all manner of rubbish in here. The mirrors, the mirrors themselves in here are just normal mirrors silvered on the back side, not front surface mirrors. The viewfinder has a ground glass screen here and here that the projected images from the viewfinder would display on. So I've got to clean those glass surfaces now. You can see how filthy they are on the outside. With a bit of luck, once I'm done, I'll have a viewfinder I can see through. So, some glass cleaner next, I think, and I'll just get those surfaces cleaned. I'll start with that mirror, because I can see that quite clearly. Again, that's just a... Uh, normal mirror, so I'm just cleaning the glass surface on the front. The silvering is at the back of the glass. And it's mate over here. Which is in a similar state. That's probably as clean as those mirrors are going to get. Now I've got to turn, turn my attention to the ground glass screen. So I expect it's plain on the outside. Where that's open to uh, generations and generations of dirty fingers. That's probably quite dirty. Oh, that looks better already. And I'll do this one. That's just that glass slopping backwards and forwards in its mount. It's always best advised to clean the outside surfaces of lenses or glasses like this first 
because it's easier to judge how clean they are and then once they're clean you can in a better place to judge how clean you've got the inside surface which in this case is the ground glass surface and this is quite dusty That looks better. Now this is the one with the loose piece of glass. That's sliding out completely. It's going to slide out completely. I'll slide it out and clean it completely. Well, you can see how filthy that is now. Right. That's pretty awful. I don't know whether that was originally glued in place, it may well have been, or whether it was just slid into place and then is held in place by the front of the camera. You can see that it's a very roughly cut piece of glass that's um, an extremely rough break across there. It's hard to believe someone cut that. Still it does the job obviously. Right, I'll slide that back into position and get rid of that little piece of cotton fluff at the same time. Oh, that's nice and bright. I could well believe you might be able to see something through there now. So, I will try fitting the shutter back into this body now. See how we get on. Just to push back into underneath that ledge. That looks good. That's working nicely. This provides our apertures, our stops. And that's prevented from sliding right out because the screw passes through there. It's got a got this piece here this to provide some sort of click stop I'm not sure it really does and I'll get the screws in place so the B lever should fit on there The screw I had decided to use, the shoulder screw, should screw through that plate and into that nut that was loose behind it. We've made sufficient space for that nut. That's working. That works. Let's rotate that. piece across 
So that should be the B setting. And you can see it shuts, stops the shutter. And if I push the lever back the other way, when it's set, it'll close again. It's not really B, it's more T than B because you have to operate the lever again. It doesn't just reset simply by taking your finger off it. That looks quite good. So, see if I can get the screws in. We have one screw there. One screw here that passes through our aperture settings lever. And one screw here. Well, that looks um, fairly convincing. Let's have a look at the front of the camera. We've got our lenses here for the viewfinder windows. I'll dust this piece off and clean those two little lenses. They are simply pushed into the recess in the wooden front of the camera and then there are a couple of very small da um, pins. Oh, and they're very, very filthy on the outside as you can see. I think I can see through those. Oh, still dirty, very, very dirty. But you can see through them a little bit. Couldn't even really distinguish any light earlier. I think that will do. So, last blowout to get rid of any dust. Put the front back on the camera. This is held in place with two screws. Shutter appears to work nicely. I'm going to look out the window now and see if I can see anything in the viewfinder, and I can. The viewfinder image, I'll tip that on its side. I don't think you'll be able to see anything. No. But the viewfinder image is such that you can see where you're pointing the camera in portrait or uh, landscape mode. So our shutter's back to going. Does the B setting work? Let's find out. Yes. And it returns again. So I think my camera is pretty much 
ready to go. If I blow the dust out, Well, here's our camera lens, of course. I haven't cleaned that. And the lens on this one is on the uh, the film cassette, I suppose you'd call this part. Yes, I think I can just about see through that. It's a bit hard getting up in here. When was the last time you saw a film spool that looked like that? Let's see what it is. Brownie Kodak it says on it. So it's definitely a Kodak spool. Um, tells me that once upon a time this camera was indeed used. Where's our wind or our advances on the other side? Let's put that here. And the slot obviously needs to go to the where the lever will be to rotate it. Yeah, that's where the slot is there. And put this in place. Engage the film advance. Yes, I can feel that rotating. Shut the back. And there is our APM box camera. All back good and going. It's a bit scruffy looking on the outside. The leatherette, because it's leather, it's, it says it was leather covered, but that's not leather, that's leatherette. Is, um, Quite, uh, quite worn, but if this was made in the late 20s, I suppose that's hardly surprising. It's um, 90 years old after all. So there you have it. Here's our APM box camera, and um, even got a tripod socket on the bottom, ready to go. I don't vouch for it taking marvellous photos. And the shutter speed, oh, I'd say that's probably in the order of a 60th of a second, perhaps a bit slower, perhaps the 30th, but certainly there and going. Thanks for watching. Oh, before I go, I said there was a detent on the uh, aperture settings, and there is. You see, I've got the shutter here open on B. Now with this pressed in all the way, the aperture is fully open. If I pull it through to the detent, which clicks in fairly positively, we've got the medium size aperture. And if I pull it out all the way, we've got a small aperture. So there you are, you're covered for um, sunny days, mild overcast and heavy overcast. Thanks for watching.